So Far Cry, for announcing Far Cry Primal, they did a live stream um, where they held it for 24 hours, just sort of looking at some cave paintings for a bit. And uh, they slowly zoomed out and slowly saw more. And then they've released a trailer um, for Far Cry 4, which is going to be based, it looks like, Nathander, like Nathanderol Caveman Time. Um, so, like, so Tom, have you played some of the other Far Cry games? Which are you a fan at all? Uh, yes, I I do really like the Far Cry games. Two, I can never get into, but one, three, and four, I and the um, mod for four, uh, three, which the name escapes me at the moment. Blood, which is really Blood, bad. Blood Dragon was it? Blood, uh, yeah, Blood Dragon. Yeah. Uh, I really love playing all them. I've wasted way too much time playing them, but they were great games. I think I think I was they're just really simple for me. I think Far Cry three is just the story in it was so great or going going through it. And uh Rob actually ruined Far Cry four for me by telling me the ending when I just No, I didn't it. I didn't tell you the ending. You did basically I told tell you me the, the secret ending. ending that you would never have found if I didn't mention it to you. But you told me like the dramatic plot point at the end. I don't really want uh, has, has everyone played Far Cry four? <laughs> Some. Like, oh, we'll watch the spoilers here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people are saying Blood Dragon was really cool. I mean, to take like a, a different take on a game and then just to you know put it through. I mean, Far Cry does sort of fit that like crazy stuff. I do love the fact that you can like customize your guns and put little like funny paint jobs on them. And you know, it's it's a nice for me. Far Cry 4 was a nice getaway from like Metal Gear Solid 5, which came out where I had to like sneak around and do everything. I just want to go in and shoot and kill everyone. Whenever I'm thinking I'm playing these kind of games, that's why I'm so bad at uh, Metal Gear. I think because I just can't play them properly. As they are. You just lack the stealth aspect of it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I just want to destroy everything. I don't really care. I just want to blow stuff up. Do you play many shooters, Jack? Is this is this your type of game? Do you think? Uh, I love shooters. Um, I I've honestly I've hated Far Cry since two. I I really want to get on with it because all my friends love it. That's uh, I get a huge positive reaction from everyone I speak to about it. But Far Cry 2, it was outpost, kill guys, open boxes, yay, get get more money for more bullets, and then do that again and again. And the stealth never never clicked with me in Far Cry. And um, the opposite to you, Tim, I fucking love stealth games. I love Splinter Cell. I uh, I'm loving Metal Gear Solid 5. And I used to get really frustrated with the way that if one guy saw me, everyone else just magically knew exactly where I was. And um, I don't know, I just found myself getting really bored with the whole, you know, go to a tower, find the area, all these random stuff. I never really enjoyed it. Like, Just Cause 2, to me, is like the perfect sandbox game. It was fun. Like, the mechanics are enough for you. Whereas I feel like, to me, Far Cry just feels like yet another shooter. I guess there is the Ubisoft model now where we've got Assassin's Creed where you climb towers and look at stuff. You've got like Far Cry, which is basically Assassin's Creed with guns, arguably. I think it is a bit. I love both games, to be honest. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I think, I think with Far Cry and Assassin's Creed now, it's got to the point where you just completely know what you're getting with each game. And, you know, I don't know why. I don't know how they've done it, but I've played almost every Assassin's Creed game coming out. I mean, the difference between Black Flag and Rogue was nothing apart from the story, I think. And there was maybe a few different upgrades, like... They don't. It's, it's almost like Ubisoft has sort of given up now in trying. They become what Nintendo were, or what Nintendo are a bit as well now. Where yeah. you know they're not really trying to push the boat out. They sort of know what works, and you know, I think it'd be better. You know, if, if you want to take sort of more risks, maybe do some more IPs. And Assassin's Creed came out for the first time. You know, that was it was something sort of revolutionary new. And I think I don't know whether innovations like stifled now in sort of the AAA market. But we definitely aren't seeing. You know, I don't think we're seeing as much innovation in from the big players as we are, you know, at all from sort of the indie scene. Um, I mean, Rob, I know you play quite a few sort of indie games. Do you think there's sort of less innovation now from the big publishers? And what, you know, is there, or is there some that are pushing? I imagine as well? they still have the innovation, but I think they're doing what Nintendo do, and they're playing it safe. If if they know that millions of people now enjoy having a map and a tower, and they like climbing the tower and then jumping off the tower and that makes their, their fans happy, then they're going to keep doing that every game because they're only losing a few people who go, this is the same boring game as last time, whereas they're still keeping those millions of people going, I love towers. So it's just going to keep happening. Um, but yeah, I love playing indie games because they're all just so different. There's Every indie developer has a different idea of perfection in mind, and then they create that, they go wild with it, and you get 
a platformers like Limbo and then platformers like Vector 2 where they're just so different to each other and they offer so many different gameplay elements and features. It's just, I find them far more interesting now. It's interesting because it's almost like a lot of these big games have got so complex and, you know, so, you know, with all this, you know, with all the, if you think of the amount of balancing that has to go into this stuff, you know, is it got to the point where they're so complex that it's, you know, it could potentially be a lot more difficult to innovate and to do things. I, I mean, what I think it'd be a lot more dangerous. Yeah. That's, that's, that's probably where the problem is. Not that it's difficult, it's dangerous. Because if they've got people like you, Tim, who enjoy <laughs> Assassin's Creed still, and they start changing Assassin's Creed, then they'll upset you and start getting death threats and stuff. And that's, that's sad. So I, they just I, won't do it. I played Mad Max recently, and that is just like Assassin. That's, that's, it's the Ubisoft format. It's exactly <laughs> yeah. the same. You just level up your car, you collect towers, you destroy bases. In a way, though, let's be fair, Metal Gear Solid Five is just that as well. How, yeah, but the bases become more complex as you go through the game and the ways in which you can play the game. Because you said you want to run in and shoot everyone. And if you want to, Metal Gear Solid, you can do that. Like, I've just unlocked a rocket launcher, which absolutely devastates people. I can go in with, like, non-lethal shotguns or, you know, sniper rifles that are lethal. You can do whatever you want. And... It, it really feels like you're actually a part of that world. Like, I go, I choose my loadout. I drop in. I, like, look at the, the camp. I'm like, oh, you know, what's going on down there? I get to the camp, and there's all these hidden uh, thoroughfares through it, hidden pathways, little tunnels. Um, and you just don't really get that. Like, in Mad Max, there's, like, what, one little yellow painted crack in a wall that you can sneak through to get past the base defences, which were half of the fun of that section anyway, was driving around and smashing those towers. Um, and it just felt really disingenuous. Like, I could tell, oh, this is, you know, the walls of the base, whereas in Metal Gear Solid, it's just like, oh, well, you know, the road goes up this way because that's the way through the outpost, and then the base starts here, and there's a bridge and some buildings underneath that and an actual base inside of it. I mean, I get that it's still doing the same thing over and over. I just think that there's more choice in how to do those things, and that makes it feel more exciting. I think with Metal Gear Solid 5, obviously there's... You know, there's the departure of um, was it Hideo who designed the game um, sort of halfway through, and there was some sort of falling out there. And for me, with with Metal Gear Solid, it was almost like, you know, there's no story to go. I think maybe I didn't get too far in. I think I'm on about mission 10 or 11 now. But there really seems to be sort of a lack of story at this point. I've done like four or five missions where I just feel like I have no context of what I'm doing. I find it really hard to sort of get involved in a bit. Mm. I think the problem is is that. Um it's such a huge game and no one like I had no idea when I started playing it I got to mission 10 and I thought yeah I'm making some you know decent progress and I asked one of my friends and he said oh there's about 50 missions and I thought oh okay um, and as I got past so when I got to that about 10 missions in I'd spent about 30 40 hours already um, and there was no story you're right it is really disjointed it's just kind of oh you know let's go to this place and take this guy away because he's really good um, but then you get on and it does start bringing in all the plot lines that are being followed from Metal Gear Solid 3, um, uh, Ground Zeroes, and Peace Walker. And obviously that's another problem with the series, is it is so complex, so you may have just been lost because you haven't followed all of this nonsense that's followed before. I read that you do have to like pick up the cassette tapes and listen to them. Uh, to yeah. to get Looking at the chat room now, actually, I think there is quite a, a mixed response to Metal Gear Solid 5. Some people not really enjoying it. In fact, I think most people aren't really enjoying it, according to our chat here. Uh, but, I've you know, seen a lot of negatives, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can I mean, understand. Uh, see, I'm, I'm a massive fan of, uh, of Metal Gear 5 and, well, the Metal Gear series in general, but I can see how it is one of those games that you kind of need to know. You probably couldn't pick up 5 and make sense of the story if you've not played the rest. You kind of need the games to sort of have a bit of a disjointed... Um, timeline anyway as in like so like five is before one and two i believe which three is before after before that and, and then four's at the end of all of that yeah four's at the end of all so there's this very disjointed timeline and if you don't sort of have played the other ones you kind of can't make sense of some of the events that are happening because they are linked with stuff that is previously happening or you can kind of go that's kind of leading to that event later on it and sort of peg it together yourself I think if you do 
just pick up five and look at it, it can be a very confusing story to just go, this makes perfect sense, let's go with it. 